Nigeria is solidly behind you. President Buhari reassures additional on AFDB's second term presidency. That the terms and conditions of the loans from each lender as are contained in the duly executed loan agreement be forwarded to the National Assembly for proper documentation. The National Assembly approves 2020-2022 revised medium-term expenditure framework as Senate gives nod to presidential loan request on bridging 2020 For budget deficit. place of worship, they are the ones that will be doing the enforcement and we expect them to limit capacity. Worshippers must observe personal hygiene and fiscal distancing. Presidential task force mandates religious leaders. Nigeria police gets matching order on arresting gender-based violence across the country. Welcome to the Network News at 9. I'm Ian Ray John. Reading with me tonight are Dato Guyemi in Lagos and Obehi Otobo Prasai, who will join us from Benin City. Welcome. President Muhammadu Buhari is reassuring the president of the African Development Bank, Dr. Akimumi Adishina, that Nigeria will stand solidly behind him in his re-election bid for a second term in office. The president gave the reassurance while granting audience to Dr. Adishina on a cutsy visit. State House correspondent Adam Musambo has the details. You are welcome. Thank you very much. <laughs> the president of the African Development Bank, Dr. Akimumi Adeshino, has been at the center of allegations of impropriety at the financial institution, but was cleared of any wrongdoing by his Committee on Ethics after investigations. However, the United States Department of Treasury dismissed the verdict calling for an independent investigation. President Muhammad Buhari, who recommended Dr. Adeshina to African leaders in 2015 for the position and worked assiduously for his election, said, having lived up to expectations as the nation's ambassador, he will continue to stand by him. He pledged that Nigeria would work with all other African leaders and stakeholders in the African Development Bank towards ensuring that Dr. Adeshina's mandate is renewed for a second term of five years, given the record of his achievements so far. The African Union had already endorsed the incumbent AFDB president as sole candidate for the continent. The African Development Bank is a multilateral institution owned by African countries, but the United States is a major investor. Giving a background to what is happening in the bank, Dr. Adeshina explained that all the 16 allegations raised against him were trumped up and without facts, evidence and documents as required by the rules and regulations of the financial institution. He said calls for fresh investigations by the United States after the Ethics Committee of the bank cleared him of all the allegations and upheld by the governors of the bank were against the rules. Dr. Adeshina said, having been exonerated, any other investigation would amount to bending the rules of the bank to arrive at a predetermined conclusion. The motive, he said, is to soil his name and that of the bank. The FDB president described as a thing of pride being a Nigerian and thanked President Muhammad Buhari for robustly supporting him all along. He used the opportunity to commiserate with the president on the death of the former chief of staff, Abba Kari, describing Professor Ibrahim Gambari, the new chief of staff, as a man of integrity and of global standing. From the State House, Adamu Sambu, NTA News. And on the economy, borrowing is one of the components of national budgeting, especially in the face of huge fiscal deficit. The impact of the loans are maximized when they are strictly spent on projects earmarked for it. This was a conviction of the Senate as it approved the external loan of $5.5 billion request by the executive. National Assembly correspondent Ignatius Nkwo reports. Of the third schedule to the constitution. Five days after the transmission of the request for the approval of external loan of $5.5 billion to the Senate by President Muhammadu Buhari, the request has been approved. That the terms and conditions of the loans from each lender, as are contained in the duly executed loan agreement, be forwarded to the National Assembly 
for proper documentation. There will be deficit in the 2020 budget, and there will be necessity to take borrowing to be able to bridge the gap. The Senate also approved the revised 2020 to 2022 medium term expenditure framework and fiscal strategy paper. The report of its Committee on Finance reviewed the benchmark for price of crude oil per barrel from $25 submitted by the executive to $28. Crude oil production per day was reduced from 1.9 million to 1.8 million barrels per day, while the exchange rate of 360 naira to a dollar was sustained as submitted by the executive. 360 to 1 US dollars as proposed by the MTEF amendment be sustained with continuous effort by the Central Bank of Nigeria to stabilize the exchange rate. 360 to a dollar certainly is a, is a devaluation of our, of our Naira. Passing the PIBB will also be able to give us more money. Keeping money in the Natural Resources Development Account, I think, is, is, is a waste. And it's really not helping. It means we are not doing much with what we get in that account. Senate has confirmed that seven nominees as chairman and members of the Federal Character Commission with Dr. Mohiba Farida Dankaka as chairman, while James Jia Kolo is to replace late Daniel James Kolo from Kwara State. It also confirmed the appointment of Dr. Frederick Ekwem and Dr. Jonah Madugu as commissioners for the Federal Civil Service Commission. Senate condemned the killing of Tina Ezekwe in Lagos by a stray bullet and Owa Omozuwa, a first-year university student who was also raped and brutalized by unknown persons inside a church in Benin City, a Doe state. Senators called for immediate arrest of the culprit and provision of stiffer penalties for offenders. A three-year-old baby was raped by a 44-year-old man. Apart from stiffer penalties, I, I think we really need to come up with a stronger advocacy against rape. And I believe that we need to make the penalties for rape stiffer. Senate has adjourned plenary to Tuesday 9th of June 2020 from the National Assembly, Ignatius Unko, NT News. Similarly, the House of Representatives has approved the federal government's revised 2020-2022 medium-term expenditure framework and fiscal strategy paper with some amendments. National Assembly correspondent Lamia Ali reports. The revised MTEF, which highlighted government strategy for budget planning and implementation, was readjusted by House Finance Committee before approval. The daily oil production output approved is 1.8 million barrels as against the proposed 1.9 million barrels, while the crude oil benchmark was put at $28 per barrel, $3 more than the 25 submitted. Another key approval is that the excess crude account in operation should be scrapped. The excess crude account has no backing of the law. The House also approved the 2016 to 2018 external borrowing plan of $22.798 billion, which the Senate approved last year, but was stepped down by House members following observations that projects captured were not evenly distributed across geopolitical zones as Northeast and Southeast were not accommodated. We met as leadership with the Minister of Finance for this poll yesterday, and we show, and I told her this is the clause we're putting into this report. Do we have your commitment that the Portacourt Medjugorje Road must be a part of, or we will not consider any report, any borrowing plan, if that is not included? And we got her, her word. Subsequent loan will also be committed to the rehabilitation of the Portacourt Medjugorje Red Line. Use your good office to make sure that the commitment we got from Ministry of Finance yesterday is carried to the letter. The recommendations of the House Committee on Army following its investigation of the insurgents attack on travelers in our noble no state was approved. We recommended that 100,000 more soldiers should be recruited to, uh, to join like the civil war. Tuesday's plenary featured consideration and approval of three bills, including the bill repealing the Nigerian Film Corporation. This bill is seeking the existing uh, Nigeria Film Corporation to turn to commission. 
motions adopted include the need for federal government to support the second-term ambition of Akin Wumi Adishino as president of Africa Development Bank from minority leader Ndudi Lumelu, and the motion from Representative Chiki Okafo, which drew attention to non-compliance of right-of-way and on siting of oil and gas stations within residential areas in view of the dangers. All the Board of African Development Bank to halt all further investigation of the President, Aki Adeshino, and let the rule of law prosper. There are over 400 filling stations located within and around residential buildings in Nigeria, and pollution from petrol stations could contaminate buildings as far as 100 meters. Sitting has been adjourned to Thursday, June 4th. From the National Assembly, Lami Ali, NCA News. Away from the National Assembly now, the Information and Culture Minister, Lai Mohammed, has inaugurated a seven-man task team on audience analysis that will help position the broadcast industry on a sound revenue-generating platform. Anthony Forsen reports. Inaugurating the task team, which has Bello Kankarofi as chairman and Joseph Muta as secretary, Lai Mohammed said their inauguration heralds a new dawn in the broadcast industry. With the digital switch over from analog television underway, awaiting an accelerated agenda to make it a veritable tool to uplift the creative industry out of the crippling effect of COVID-19, audience measurement, which has remained the missing link in the entire ecosystem, is desirable in making the digital switch over sustainable for digital distributors, channel owners, TV content producers, and advertisers. Without audience measurement, we will not see the growth in our television and the value creation in the creative industry that the economy and people of Nigeria so much desire. We need an objective and scientific audience measurement system that articulates the value of the content to consumers as well as the value of the audience to advertisers. The minister noted that the absence of world-class measurement regime has resulted in underinvestment in the sector, which is necessary to foster growth due to advertisers' reliance on audience measurement to assist in advert placements. The existing model will never enable Nigeria's creative industry to reach its full potential. It stunts the quality of the content that can be created and also limits the capacity of television platforms to invest in dynamic contents that consumers will be attracted to. The minister decried the lack of proportional value of broadcast adverts despite Nigeria's population when compared to South Africa. He said in 2016, Nigeria's advert revenue stood at $309 million compared to South Africa, which was $1,301 million. La Mohammed maintained that there is an urgent need to have a robust return on investment and an overall effect of guaranteed greater spending by advertisers. Similarly, the federal government, he said, is subsidizing signal distribution because channels cannot pay for carriage by their signal distributors who have invested in equipment and transmission. The committee's terms of reference include identifying best practice audience measurement system, recommend a framework for supporting the sustainability of the system, recommend a payment and disbursement framework among key stakeholders in the industry, that is, BORN, Media Independent Practitioners Association of Nigeria, and ADVAN. Chairman of the task team, Belo Kankarofi, expressed gratitude for the honor, assuring that even though the task is Herculean, members of the team will strive to justify the confidence reposed in them. In Abuja, Anthony Forson, NTA News. In other news, the federal government has directed the police to unravel the circumstances surrounding the gang rape and murder of Viera Waila Omozua, a female student of the University of Benin, and the serial sexual abuse of a minor in Jigawa State by 14 men and bring the perpetrators to justice. In a statement issued by the Minister of Information and Culture, Lai Mohammed, by bringing the perpetrators of the heinous crimes to justice, the federal government will be serving a strong notice of its total aversion to gender-based violence in whatever form. The minister described the gang rape and murder of Ms. Omozua as a cruel and barbaric act that offends human sensibility, in addition to being antithetical to decency, 
saying no society will tolerate such depravity. He also says the serial sexual abuse of a minor by 14 men in Jigawa state is not only repulsive but highly condemnable. He points out that the true measure of a society can be found in how it treats its most vulnerable members. The federal government, Lai Mohammed, adds, will do everything possible to stem the growing tide of gender-based violence in the country. The Inspector General of Police, Mohamed Adamu, has ordered the immediate transfer of the ongoing investigations into the sexual assault and murder of Ms. Viera Waila Omozua in Benin, Edo State, from the State Police Headquarters, Benin, to the Force Headquarters, Abuja. In a release about the Force PRO, the DIG in charge of the Force Criminal Investigation Department, DIG Anthony Ubizi Michael, will henceforth provide direct supervision and ensure speedy and thorough investigation of the case. Similarly, the IGP has ordered the immediate deployment of specialized investigators and additional investigation assets to all the gender desk offices and the juvenile welfare centers across the country. This is to strengthen and enhance the capacity of the units to respond to increasing challenges of sexual assaults and domestic and gender-based violence linked with the outbreak of the COVID-19 pandemic and other social ills within the country. And reported cases of violence and rape against women is said to be under increase despite the lockdown. As such, drawing attention of key players for immediate action. This has prompted a nationwide online meeting between the Minister of Women Affairs and State Commissioners of Women Affairs to draw attention and take immediate action on the matter. Momso Damien Dati brings us up to speed. There's a general restriction on movement, gatherings and social interactions across Nigeria. But this seems not to reduce the level at which cases of violence and rape of women and girls of all ages are being reported. Most recent and worrisome is that of Vera Uwela Omozua, the 23-year-old University of Benin student, brutally raped and murdered while reading in a church. Now, the Minister of Women Affairs is joining forces with state commissioners and civil society organizations to develop a roadmap and agree on unanimous actions that will curb the menace. To this end, data was collated, experiences shared, and suggestions made to stem the tide nationwide. Consequently, a national data coalition tool was launched by the Minister of Women Affairs to record, validate, and manage data, and with the support of the UNDP, technically equipped operators. Momso Damien Bati, NTA News. Up ahead, global new normal coping with COVID-19 in Nigeria. Details in a bit. <laughs> I wish to once again commend the frontline workers across the country who, on a daily basis, risk everything to ensure we win this fight. For those who got infected in the line of duty, rest assured that government will do all it takes to support you and your families during this exceedingly difficult period. I will also take this opportunity to assure you all that your safety, well-being, and welfare remains paramount to our government. I am using this opportunity to express our deepest condolences to the families of all Nigerians that have lost their loved ones as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. This is our collective loss, and we share your grief.
All existing Glow customers now enjoy up to 20% more data. Awesome. Dial star 777 hash to choose a plan. Glow Unlimited. My mother-in-law and I are like five and six. And our gilly game, it's copy and paste. But when it comes to our favorite milk, we're so different. My mother-in-law loves her pig filled milk because it's low in cholesterol. And I love my pig full cream milk because it's rich and creamy. And that's why I buy both. So choose your pig today. Pig, reach for your pig. A united Nigeria. Strong in the fight against COVID-19 to bring a voice of hope to join hands to bring an end to this pandemic. Candidico Hafia Sia Wadara Mutwaka Candy Weri Kite Ihumaka Hunike Sidi Kwan Kwadebe Makogwa Nya Tijo Afara Bama Labia Bata Ulumo Asi Bori Oguno Akoko to Lati Fara Bamo Sinu Ile Mutiga Bata Kate Juna Kumumikia Ula in the Kwechun Kosa Mutani Okumolo Pipa Prison Call Okachide Wamele ya mevogja wakura bowe koke kokyo Woji siliji sanitizer wakura bowe Fulbe, mbalen ko eme den, kauten juu den Kapen nuu nyaw coronavirus Ndaro ten e uro, mbalen gomnati, mbalen ko eme den Nuu nyaw, tungwaray, tundilay One Nigeria, different languages And we shall surely prevail This message is brought to you by the National Orientation Agency Nigerian Film Corporation Powering possibilities in partnership with Nigerian Television Authority. You can't beat the rich. We have observed the lockdown. We have practiced the measures in order to curb the spread of the virus. But we can do better. The coronavirus spread is increasing daily and only together can we cut down the numbers and defeat the spread of the virus. Remember, COVID-19 is not a death sentence and a recovered patient cannot spread the disease. Do not stigmatize. Do not hesitate to report any case or if you have come in contact with anybody that has been infected with COVID-19. If you have cough and fever, please stay at home and call your state hotline. Find state numbers at www.covid19.ncdc.gov.ng. Remember, it is for your own good and for the good of every Nigerian. Let us do better and defeat the virus. Together, we can do this. This message is brought to you by the Nigerian Television Authority, NTA, Africa's largest television network. Good to have you back. World Health Organization has warned countries in Latin America to halt easing lockdowns as the pandemic has not reached its peak in the region. Debola Brooksland Sunday has this and more on global updates on COVID-19. Latest statistics by the Nigerian Center for Disease Control reveal that the country now has 10,578 confirmed infections of coronavirus, 299 deaths, while 3,122 recoveries have been documented. 63,882 COVID-19 tests have been carried out by the center. Lagos State tops the list of states with the highest cases in Nigeria, followed by Kanu. Federal Capital Territory, Katsina, and Edo states. Below the ladder are Taraba, Abia, Anambra, Benue, and Kogi states. On the African continent, record published by Africa Center for Disease Control shows that there are now 153,325 confirmed COVID-19 cases with 64,793 recoveries and 4,356 fatality. The figures show that South Africa, Nigeria, and Algeria have the highest reported cases on the continents. Meanwhile, the World Health Organization Nations has said that the pandemic has not reached its peak in Latin America and warned countries in the region to avoid easing lockdowns. India's government said it has approved Gilead antiviral drug Remdesivir for emergency use for five doses in treating COVID-19 patients. Remdesivir, which is administered intravenously in hospitals, is the first drug to show improvement in COVID-19 patients in formal clinical trial. And a Wuhan state media has reported that a medical doctor 
working as a urologist at Wuhan Central Hospital, has died of coronavirus. Globally, data published by Johns Hopkins University as at 6.30 p.m. local time show that there have been 6,419,294 confirmed cases and 378,959 deaths since the outbreak began. I am Adebola, Brooklyn Sunday. Thank you, Adebola. Now, as part of guidelines to regulate the reopening of places of worship in the country amidst the coronavirus pandemic, the Presidential Task Force on COVID-19 says worshippers must observe personal hygiene protocols and physical distancing, which must be enforced by religious leaders and respective state governments. Mitari Igbe tells us more. Use of face masks is mandatory. We strongly discourage all close contacts, including shaking hands, hugging, kissing, handing out of materials, and sharing of worship implements, including prayer mats, musical organs, microphones, etc. The capacity of the facility should be limited to allow for physical distancing of at least two meters between persons. Places of worship should plan if possible, for separate entry and exit points. Churches to open from 5 a.m. and close by 8 p.m. For churches, each service should be for a maximum of an hour with an interval of 30 minutes in between services to allow time for disinfection. Mosques may open 15 minutes before Adan and close 10 minutes after prayer for Fajr, Zuhur, and Asr. For Friday prayers, Mosques are to open 20 minutes before prayers and close 20 minutes after prayers. The total time for Friday prayers, including sermons, should not exceed an hour. The PTF says these guidelines for the reopening of places of worship are basic regulations for state governments to enforce and not relax. They are the ones that will be doing the enforcement and we expect them to limit capacity. It is important to bear in mind that this phase more than lockdown itself is in the hands of the people, more than in the hands of government. The chairman of the task force said a photograph trending on social media of children wearing used personal protective garments calls for proper disposal of PPEs. Although it is not certain if the photograph was taken in Nigeria, but significantly that photograph represents a dangerous development. It underscores the need for more risk communication, community engagement, and diligence in the disposal of used PPEs on the part of our frontline workers and their administrators. Nigerians are urged to empathize with those affected by the coronavirus pandemic and refrain from criticizing the growing figures. We've had 812, 812 healthcare workers infected. They're not just numbers. 29 of these work for the Nigeria Center for Disease Control. There are people I know. They have families, wives, children. About eight of them right now are in the do treatment center. So how does this represent fraud? So we need to really understand what these numbers mean. The Minister of Foreign Affairs appeals to Nigerians abroad awaiting evacuation to be patient. With this uh, a new uh, mechanism that will no longer require hotel uh, quarantining uh, is that hopefully we'll also be able to now speed up uh, the, um, the process of uh, repatriation. The task force gave indication that resumption of domestic flights by 21st of this month may compel a review of the interstate travel ban in Abuja, Mitaire, Ikben. NTA News. And in Kano, compliance with the federal government easing of the lockdown imposed to curb the spread of COVID-19, Kano state government has released guidelines and established protocols on how to manage access to markets and locations of economic activity to limit the risk of transmission. The State Commissioner for Information, Malam Mohamed Garba, says in a statement that after due consultations with key public health professionals and critical review of the situation in Kano, markets, places of worship and movement of persons are now allowed on Sundays, Wednesdays and Fridays from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. 
emphasizing compliance with safety rules. The Commissioner points out that while these restrictions have been lifted, interstate movements except for goods, agricultural produce and essential services is still in force while schools remain closed. Like most sectors of the economy, COVID-19 has impacted the aviation industry as revenue nosedived in the sector since the lockdown. Aviation correspondent Emmanuel Ayemiro examines the overall effect of the pandemic on domestic flights and what lies ahead. Nigeria joined the rest of the world to shut down her airports in March 2020 as part of efforts to contain the spread of coronavirus, a pandemic which has taken a toll on lives, travels and tours, leading to financial crisis in the sector. For instance, the Federal Airport Authority of Nigeria France says that chains of activities like the bureau de change, car hire, duty-free and other businesses that thrive on passengers' activities around the airport have ceased. Aircraft are on ground, airport operators are on ground, handlers are on ground, Foilers on ground, almost every stakeholder in the aviation industry has been grounded. Our revenue has dropped by 95%. And uh, when you consider that we shoulder a lot of our own responsibilities, especially salaries and uh, pensions, and then we have a huge amount of uh, overhead costs, then technically it's like we are saying this is treating our, our very existence. Already. Pay cuts and staff retrenchment had commenced since April by some airlines as the effect of COVID-19 buys on, with some going as high as 80% in staff salary reduction across board, while others stated that 90% of staff should proceed on leave without pay from May 1st, 2020 until further notice. As planes sit on the ground, they run beers. The only time they rake in money is when they are in the skies. For instance, if this maintenance work that I have said to you that must be done some fortnightly, if they were judiciously and diligently done, then the workforce the, you know, that were busy doing them would have been paid, wouldn't they? June 24th is the expected resumption date of local flights in Nigeria, but copy with the COVID-19 protocols for airlines is another hurdle ahead. Emmanuel Ayemiro, NTA News. We head to Borno State now when 10,000 households have benefited from the distribution of palliatives in Kalabagi local government area, one of the remote border areas that has suffered significant insurgency attacks. Governor Babagana Umar Zulum supervised the exercise where returnees in communities in RAN headquarters of the council area received support, courtesy of the federal, state government and Dangote Foundation. Mohamed Goni reports. Kalabalgia is said to be one of the disadvantageous areas in the country, considering its location and terrain. As soon as the rainy season sets in, the area is completely cut off from other parts of the state. The situation was further compounded by the insurgency leading to displacement of communities. Though around headquarters of the council have been resettled, scores could still be found taking refuge in Cameroon. It was to each of these male and female resettled residents that two 10 kg bags of rice, one bag of sorghum, one carton of spaghetti and cooking oil were presented. I say appreciation to the President and Commander in Chief of the Nigerian Armed Forces, President Buhari, for all that he has been doing towards repositioning the Northeastern Subdivision. According to the Governor, the gesture will go a long way in catering for the families there as rainy season sets in. Residents of Ren taking refuge in Cameroon have also benefited from the gesture. The beneficiaries appreciated the gesture and prayed for a return of peace to the state and the country as a whole. The governor had in appreciation of the military performance in the remote area and the difficult terrain, announced donation of food and cash support to the officers and troops on the front line. From Ren headquarters of Kala Belge, Mahmoud Goni, NTA News. Nigerian Navy has donated food and other essentials to 500 vulnerable households in Kachia, local government area of Kaduna State. This is to cushion the effect of the lockdown imposed on the states to curb the spread of coronavirus pandemic. Suleiman Abdullahi Rigachukun reports. The lockdown order came with attendant effect of food shortage and other essential needs of the people, especially the less privileged in the society. Mungodi. 
We appreciate the Nigerian Navy for the gesture and for securing our lives. The palliatives will help me to feed my family. I thank them for it. The donation of food items to Ungon Ayuba, a neighboring community to the Nigerian Navy School of Armament Technology, Kachia. The authorities say is to ameliorate the effects and promote civil military relations in dealing with criminality in the area. This action demonstrates the empathy selfless service of the Nigerian Navy to host community and cordial civil military relationship for peaceful and mutual beneficial coexistence. The gesture is part of activities marking the 64th anniversary of the Nigerian Navy's active engagement in national defense and security. In Kaduna, I am Suleiman Abdullah Irigachkun, NTA News. And from Kaduna, we go to Lagos, where Dotu will bring us more news. Hello, Dotu. Thank you, Ian Ray. The Nigerian Navy has inaugurated a 40-bed fully equipped COVID-19 isolation center for its personnel in Lagos. Flag Officer Commanding Western Naval Command, Rear Admiral Oladele Daji, disclosed that the initiative is to support the federal government in the fight against the coronavirus pandemic. Imola Yotukede reports. With the increase in emerging cases of COVID-19 in the country and Lagos State being the epicenter of the virus, more isolation centers must be established to reduce further spread of the virus. The Nigerian Navy says it has identified this need, which informed the decision to erect an isolation center for its personnel at the Naval Dockyard the in Victoria the Island. And COVID-19 isolation center to the glory of God and for the benefit of all our people. In each of the 10 rooms in the structure are four bed spaces, which are divided into two sections. One section will accommodate asymptomatic cases, while the other will cater to symptomatic patients. The center also houses pulse oximeters, monitors, oxygen machines, and ventilators. This is Nigerian Navy's proactive uh, measure to make sure that we contribute our own quota towards the uh, management of uh, COVID-19 patients, especially among naval personnel. Restricted ceremonial sunset marks the end of the week long activities to celebrate the Nigerian Navy's 64th anniversary. The Navy is uh, willing, able, and ready to continue to protect uh, our nation. The ceremony was held at the NNS Kora base in Apapa, in Lagos, in Moliayo Tukidi, NTA News. Ahead of the proposed reopening of the Murtala Mohammed International Airport in Lagos, airline operators will be given a checklist of conditions that must be met before flight operations can resume. Michael Olale reports on this, plus the repatriation of British and Indian citizens from Nigeria. Deserted aerodrome, no aircrafts to taxi the runway. In spite of this atmosphere at the Motala Mohammed International Airport in Lagos, there is still an opportunity for these 233 Indians and 304 British nationals who had been held back by the COVID-19 lockdown to feel the joy of reuniting with their loved ones. Grimham is an engineer stranded in Nigeria and not in his widest imagination would he have thought that a journey of two weeks could turn to months. But other than that, yeah, I've been here since February. I should have had more, one more. I think there's still a few people to come. Eh? With the proposed reopening of the nation's airports visible, there has been concern about travelers' apathy towards air transportation. Peter Eni, who is a businessman, shares a contrary view as he believes air transportation has become indispensable. There are farms you make car. Our own kind of farm is by plane. I regard UK as a place where I do my own farming. Meanwhile, one of the regulators in the industry is working with airline operators to coordinate a safety restart plan. They will need to notify us of their readiness to start operation and they will not just go and pick a plane and be flying. 
we already give them a checklist of what we have to see. The materials, the equipment, the safety guard, the medical facility, everything that they have acquired in readiness to operate without having to allow any infection or spread of infection. Regulators are also considering reducing passengers' capacity on an aircraft as one of the ways of ensuring that safety is not compromised. In Lagos, Michael Olale, NT News. And that's it from here. Network News continues after the break. As a strong immune system increases the chances of victims surviving COVID-19, a corruption-free society creates opportunities for citizens to thrive and prosper. Build your immunity. Stop corruption now. Report all acts of corruption to ICPC on this toll-free number. 0800-2255-4272. This message is brought to you by ICPC and NTA. Nigerians, let us take responsibility. Stay healthy, stay safe, and curb the spread of the virus. Take responsibility. The coronavirus spreads from one person to another. Let us avoid crowd gathering of any kind for any reason. Take responsibility. Avoid traveling from one state to another during these lockdown restrictions. Obey all the rules that are put in place. Take responsibility. Stop spreading fake news and unverified reports about the coronavirus. There is no known cure for COVID-19. Take responsibility. Observe all the measures that can help stop the spread of the virus. Together, we can do this, but only if we take responsibility. This message is brought to you by the Nigerian Television Authority, NTA, Africa's largest television network. Now believe this corotin. You know, if you touch black man, if you like, gather the whole Niger, come together, make a cough. <laughs> Nothing. Which one you want? Give me V and D. Uh -huh. I beg, get small pieces. How much you want to give her? Give me 200. <coughs> Take your change now. Will you? you know what your change is? My people, this coronavirus, na serious matter, me will not wash your hands regularly. Come use alcohol based. Hand sanitizer. If you no see water, wash your hand. Oh, make una sit down for house. You see this virus, so oh? it no get leg. Now we the waka kuru kere. No walk around, make the virus for die. No forget say the betterment of our people. Now for your handy day. This message is from the Akin Fadei Foundation in partnership with the National Orientation Agency, with support from MacArthur Foundation. <laughs> Thank you for staying. Now, looking at agriculture, about 10,000 farmers across 13 states of the country are to benefit from the federal government's initiative of free seeds in this year's farming season to ensure food sufficiency and also cushion the effects of COVID-19. Minister of Agriculture, Sabu Nanunu, who flagged off the exercise, said the gesture is aimed at ensuring that food production is not in any way disrupted by the coronavirus pandemic. Lawal Salal Inua reports. The idea of free seed distribution to farmers was conceived out of the need to tackle challenges posed by the coronavirus pandemic as it has continued to take its toll on all sectors of the economy. The impact will invariably affect farming activities in this year's rainy season, hence the need to support farmers with the input to achieve bumper harvest. The Minister of the Agriculture, Mohamed Sabanonunu, while inspecting the seeds, appreciates the effort of the development partners for the laudable gesture. The Federal Ministry of Agriculture will soon also start distributing seeds to farmers across the country. And also there is a massive program for small-scale farmers, probably hoping to cover at least 2 million farmers uh, between now and November and uh, December this year. We are going to give each farmer seed to plant one hectare of sorghum or millet and then half an hectare of rice and a quarter of hectare of cowpea. So for each farmer, we get only one crop. He assured smallholder farmers of government support 
to ensure accessed farming season other than that his ministry is poised to create 10 million jobs between now and the next 12 months. In Kano, Lawal Sallow Inwa, NTA News. Monitors of NPAR are expected to receive alerts of their payments for the months of March and April 2020 within the next 72 hours, while the process of May is ongoing. A statement by the Deputy Director of Information, Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development, Roda Ishaku Ilia, says the Minister, Sadia Umar Farouk, disclosed that all approvals have been made and processes for payment triggered. She added that the delay for the payment was due to the change in government policy of migration from the Remita platform system to the GIFMRS system of payment, which requires offloading the beneficiaries into the new system. The Minister regrets any inconveniences caused by this delay towards the payment of the monitors of NPAR who have proven their mantle as patriotic Nigerians. Now time to join Benin and Obehi is right there to bring us more news. Hello, Eri. Thanks very much for joining us in Benin. The Ekiti State Government has provided personal protective materials to all civil service workers on duty to enhance their safety against coronavirus. Governor Kayode Fayemi, represented by the head of service, advised workers to observe all protocols to check the spread of COVID-19 in the state. Yemi Delamo has details. Ekiti State Governor Dr. Kayode Fayemi, while easing the lockdown on the state, announced the resumption of workers from grade level 8 and above with strict instruction to them to comply with all precautionary measures to contain the COVID-19 pandemic. The supply of the modern hand washing equipment to government offices, ministries and parastatals in the state is therefore to ensure that all government officials and visitors comply with this directive. The state head of service, Mrs. Peju Babafemi, said the Personal protective equipment, including sanitizers, thermometer, and other materials, will enhance workers' safety against the coronavirus. Government has put everything in place to ensure our safety in our offices. When we are healthy, we'll be able to do our work well. And since government is doing all of this to ensure our safety, to whom much is given, much is expected. The Ekiti State Head of Service urge workers to continue to spread the gospel of coronavirus prevention to other members of the society in Adwekiti, Yemi Dalimo, NT News. The Nigerian Navy is commemorating the 64th anniversary of its establishment with the distribution of palliative to vulnerables in all Navy host communities in the country. Anwili Okolo has details of the exercise in Delta State. More than 250 households and two orphanages in Ogara, Delta State, benefited from the largesse of the Nigerian Navy Logistics Command in that area. For them to come today again with this, it's not just small palliative. This is more than palliative. We are very grateful to them. Their initiative is a very good one, and uh, I think they should continue. If they continue like this, uh, there will be much blessing for them. The community people, they are very happy over what the Navy has done for us today. The representative of the chief of the naval staff, Rear Admiral Sumaila Lassa, says the outreach is in compliance with the directives of the naval headquarters in a bid to identify with the present circumstances of effects of COVID-19 on humans and their livelihoods. And uh, we now say suffer day for the last, but what day for all of us? So as it touch our heart, we have to come bring something small to give us. At least make we just give family, family, family. We we'll love to give everybody. The items distributed include bags of rice, beans, gari, and drinks, as well as vegetable oil. From Ogara Delta State, Anwili Okolo, NTA News. And that's it from Benin. The news continues with Ieri in Abuja. Many thanks, Subahi. Time to take a break. Do stay. Executive Order 10, 2020. How sustainable for representative democracy in the face of financial autonomy for state legislature and state judiciary. Plus, 
Five years of President Buhari's administration. How far? So far. This are the focus on NT Tuesday Life this week. Tuesday Life, incisive and educative. Join us at 10.30 p.m. Let's talk sports now. Both states set to resource state sports sector. Ayodeji Makinde has details. Worried by the falling standards of sporting activities in Bochi State, Governor Bala Mohammed says his administration is ready to roll out a robust plan that will restore the state's lost glory. Correspondent Mahmoud Ibn Mohammed reports that Governor Bala Mohammed is confident that if the state rejigs its sports sector, it would create more jobs for the youth. We'll definitely do more. Encourage our Minister of Education to do more of secondary and primary sporting activities so that we can hunt for talents the way talents were hunted before. Meanwhile, the Nigeria Football Federation has been commended for inserting the need to invite more home-based players to Super Eagle squad as contained in the new contract extension to technical advisor Genot Raw. Former Green Eagles winger Felix Owolabi in an interview with Lanre Beleyi in Ibado maintains this will improve the quality of Nigeria professional football league stars and also attract more spectators to league venues nationwide. If you assemble 22 players, Nigerian 22 players for me the bulk of the national team, the Super Eagles, and you cannot find one, two, three players from the local league, it is common sense that I personally would not want to come and watch the local league. The former 3SC of Ibado forward was instrumental as Nigeria lifted its first ever Africa Cup of Nations title in 1980. With sports updates, Ayodeji, Makinde NTA News. And on a sad note, President Muhammadu Buhari has commiserated with elder statesman and former military governor of Plata State, uh, Commodore Dan Suleiman, over the passing of his wife, Mari Dan Suleiman, who will be laid to rest at the weekend. The president also condoled with all family members and associates of the matrix, whose investment of love in her family and community will always be remembered. He prayed that the Almighty God will receive the soul of the deceased and comfort her family. Also, the death has been announced of Madame Ezini Lolo Fidelia Wanyoma Umwishi of Umuchoko Eziala Ogu Unguru Abo Umbiese local government area of Imo State. She was aged 85 years. Late Madame Umwishi passed away on the 14th of May 2020 and will be buried on June 4, 2020 in her hometown. She survived by many relatives and in-laws. Amongst them is Peace Umwishi a chief engineer at the NTA. And that's Network News tonight. Many thanks for being a part of it. Please continue to remain safe. Good night.